Okay, guys, thank you very much for tuning in again to watch more of Microsoft Excel videos. Today, I'm going to continue on what we have learned last time. During the previous lesson, we have learned on how to create a spreadsheet. And this was an example of the spreadsheet that I did with those who were watching. Now, I'm going to show you how to add a new column. And I'm going to show you how to do basic calculations on Microsoft Excel. The version that I'm using is Microsoft Excel 2013 currently. And uh, normally the layout of Excel is the same throughout all versions. But if you have this one, it's fine. If you have the older version, it's also fine. No problem. Now I'm going to show you how to add a new column between amount and balance before we can calculate. And this is how I do it. Okay, as you have seen what I've did, what I've done actually there is right click on the column on the right hand side and click insert and a new column will be inserted on the left. So now it's an empty column, then I can type what I need to type and put the information that I have to put. you can see now here what I've done is inserting a new column and naming that column with the column heading. So I'm just going to make this bold and so that it can be the same as others. See here, what you see here is that I'm going to create or put in the data that I need to put here so that we can do calculations after that. So I'm just going to insert other currencies or other amounts underpaid, then we can calculate furthermore. So you have noticed that when I type them, the figures that I've put, the values that I've inserted there, immediately when I type them, they are formatted to be currency. And the R comes automatically. I didn't type the letter R. It's because I formatted amount before to be currency with two decimals, like I've shown you during our previous lesson. If you missed it, you will have to start there before you come to this lesson. So now the 50 rands, 10 rands and 52 rands that I've typed now as you see them there, I have just typed in the figures or the values. Then the R symbol that you see there just came in automatically because the cell has been formatted to be currency like we have learned during our previous lesson. Now looking at this balance column, I'm going to put a calculation here. That says because they've paid this money from this money, which is amount, then how much will they be having as a balance under their payments? So it means I have to do a calculation now. And that is how I'm going to introduce it to you. You firstly need to know some few things before we can start on calculations. The first thing that you need to know before we can calculate is that you have to only calculate the first row or the first line of numbers. Then the rest we are going to do what we call auto fill. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the cursor or the cell selector there next to 50 rands for John. Then when we get the answer for John, we'll have to auto fill the answer so that it can calculate for us. For Mandy and Steve. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my mouse and put it there. Now the first thing that you do when you calculate, you put an equal sign from the keyboard. I've done that. Now the balance says, balance means that because they've paid, what do, do you have as the remaining? So you will need to subtract 250. You need sub, to subtract from, from 250, we subtract 50 rands. And those figures or values are already there. So what I do, every time when you calculate, it doesn't matter what type of calculation that you do or you'll be doing, the first thing that you put is an equal sign. Then you click the first one that comes in your calculation, what is the principal value, the first value that you need to subtract from or calculate from. So we need to subtract 250 from uh, 50 rands. I mean 50 rands from 250. So we'll have to click. Now you have noticed that when I click 250, it circles it with a ring to show that it's included in the formula or calculation there so now this 250 it is referenced with the address where it's coming from like we have learned during our previous lesson that each and every cell is known by its address so 250 comes from c2 as you can see so when i click 250 it gives me c2 why because that is where the value is found then i'm going to say minus from the keyboard Then I have to now click 50. I take my mouse and click inside 50. I took my mouse, I clicked inside 50. And now you see it says C2 minus D2 because the cell that contains 50 is D2. The cell that contains 250 is C2. So after doing this, then you are done with what you are currently doing. That we are currently doing now is it means we are subtracting. Then we will just have to press enter on the keyboard. Gives you an answer of 200 because 250 minus 50 is 200. So what do I do for Mandy and Steve? I just go inside that 200 and put the cursor. Actually, we call it a cell selector. I click there. Cell selector is there. And you see now at the corner, bottom right corner of the cell selector, there is a dot or a, a something that looks like a full stop or a point there like this. So this point or this dot, actually, it means it's an autofill button. We call it an autofill button. So it's a button. If you click on it, like I'm going to put my mouse on it now, you will see what happens. I just put my mouse there. My mouse changes to take a shape of a plus sign. So it means now I'm on top of that button. When you see the cursor or the pointer changes to be like this. Then I hold my mouse and drag down. what happened there it means that i copied the formula to the other cells it means i copied the same pattern of a calculation to the other rows so that whatever numbers it finds in d3 and d4 it has to do the same thing that we have done in d2 so it means now the answer that we found in e2 when we're calculating for john it will be the same pattern of calculation will be used in mendy and it will also be used in Steve so that we get 290 for Mandy and 298 for Steve. That is how you do a calculation. Now next is when you do what we call functions. A function is when you are actually going to use an uh, already built-in calculation or a formula that is within Microsoft Excel to calculate for you like for instance you have to calculate the total which can be called sum 
uh, you can also calculate the highest number which is going to be a max function lowest number which is going to be a mean function or you can even count how many items you have or in this case we can count how many customers do we have so i'm just going to type few things to increase our spreadsheet so that we can do this type of calculations i'm talking about Now, as you can see, some of the things I'm not explaining because they were coming from tutorial one. But what I've done here is that I have typed to increase my spreadsheet. I made sure that the new things that I've typed, they are also included uh, within the borders. I've included borders for them. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start with the first one that I've typed, which is total. And then I will go to lowest number and after that I will go to highest number after that I will calculate number of customers. So let me make them all bold. Right. So now I need to calculate the total number or the total column or the total row. There's the total row that you see there. I need to calculate it. So total comes with a function called sum. This is how you do it. Remember I said every calculation that you start or any calculation that you do or if you want Excel to calculate for you, you start with an equal sign. So I've put an equal sign, I wrote sum. So when you write sum, because it's recognized, you can see that now there are many different types of sums that you can get. But a basic sum whereby you have to add things together, it's sum only, only sum. Then you open a bracket immediately. After opening a bracket, obviously a bracket must be closed. But before we close, we have to take our mouse and highlight all the numbers that needs to be included when the addition is going to happen. What numbers are you going to add together? So we are going to add together, for instance, now customers so that we know that customer ID It's an example. Then we know that all the ID numbers combined, they give us a sum of how much. I closed the bracket and I pressed enter it gave me 965 then I'm going to make sure that I can get the all the other sums for amount paid and balance by doing what we did when we did the autofill now that was autofill now, because now the other three that we autofilled are currency, I'm going to change them to be currency. Now you can see that I have 900 rands, 112 rands, and 788 rands. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate the lowest number amongst all of them. So when you go to lowest, lowest equals to mean. The function to get the lowest number is min. So it will be the lowest number within the column of amount. The lowest number within the column of paid, the lowest number within the balance column. So I'm going to start there by amount.
when you calculate the lowest number or when you are trying to find the lowest number, it's not low, it's not lowest, it's equals to mean. Mean is a function that can get you a lowest number. So obviously I will also open the bracket. Then I will have to highlight all the amounts. Then I close the bracket and press enter. Then I get 250 because 250 is the lowest number. If I autofill going to the right, it will give me the lowest number for paid and the lowest number for balance. Right, so with the highest number, the function for highest number is max. I'm going to highlight all the amounts and close the bracket and press enter. It gives me 350. 350 is the answer, is the correct answer because the highest number of amounts within the amounts column, the highest number within the amount column is only 350. So when I autofill it to the right, it will give me the highest payee, which is going to be 52. And I will also get 298. Two ninety-eight. Now coming to the last one, it says number of customers. Number of customers. How many customers do I have? Customer name: John, Mendy, and Steve. There are three, but you can't type three because you have to come up with a function that will determine that three for you. So I have to put the cursor there after just next to number of customers and use the function count A because I'm counting things that are not numbers but they are alphabets. So I will have to say count A, open the bracket, highlight all the three names, close the bracket. This is how I do it. I had all of the names, then I close the bracket. Press enter. The three that I was talking about because we have three customers. So this is how you actually do your basic calculations on Excel. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. See you during the next lesson.